Today I'd like to teach you guys uh, how to do some vital monitoring on your pets at home so that um, in an emergency you can have a bit of a, more of an idea what's going on but, but actually what I'd recommend you do is, is familiarise yourself with what's normal in your pets because every pet is different and then your best place to pick up any abnormalities that might be developing perhaps earlier on. Uh, so the things we're going to be looking at are um, what we can tell from inside the mouth on the, on the mucous membranes, um, how to take a pulse rate, uh, how to check the respiratory rate, so the breathing weight, uh, and also um, the correct way to take the dog's temperature. So today I'm joined with uh, Toffee. Uh, Toffee's come in today to have an operation. She's been pre-medicated for that operation, so she's nice and sleepy. So she's going to be very easy to do these tests on, so I can show you. So we'll start off by looking at the mucous membranes. Um, so what you want to have a little look at is just reversing the gum uh, of, of the dog and having a look at a couple of things. This is really important. The colour is key. So usually they're this nice, what we call salmon pink colour. Every dog is slightly different though, but we're looking at, at generally what that colour is because changes in that colour can indicate a problem. So if they go really dark red, it can be a sign of infection. If they're really pale, it can be a sign of anemia. If they're yellow, it can be a sign of like a liver problem. So we have a little look at, at what the colour is and check it's all normal. Um, the other thing we're looking for is how do they feel? This is a real key way to tell early on if an animal's dehydrated. So there should be a moistness to them when you press on them. And as they get dehydrated, it becomes more tacky, more dry. So familiarise yourself with, with how your dog's gums feel. Same in a cat. And the final thing that we can tell from here is, is what we call the capillary refill time, which gives you an idea of their circulation. So what you want to do, all right, pop it, is just press on that gum. And you see that the colour disappears out from the gum and it goes white. And it's how quickly that colour comes back in again. And that usually in most animals is around about two seconds. If it's a lot quicker than that, again, it can be a sign of infection. If it's a lot slower than that, it can be a sign that, that we've got a shock problem or uh, something going on like that. Next thing I want you guys to have a look at is, is the breathing rate of your animals. And it's really key to do this in a situation like this. So when they're sleeping, when they're at rest, because obviously after exercise or when excited, that breathing rate is, is really elevated. And all you want to do is count the respiratory rate over a minute. So we just watch the dog from a distance and we count the rate. You can just see the chest and the abdomen rising and falling. So one breath there. And another breath there. And a third one. Okay, so nice slow rate at rest. Uh, and that's actually a really a good sign to say. Again, you can detect pain and discomfort if that respiratory rate is up. Um, and uh, obviously lung problems, heart problems. And actually with heart problems, a, a slowly increase in heart rate is probably the first thing people at home could pick up on that would tell the vet that something was going wrong. Um, so now we'll go on to the pulse rate. Obviously, if you had a stethoscope, you could listen to the chest and get the heart rate, but actually I find that a pulse rate is more reliable um, because the heart rate doesn't always equate to what the pulse is. So trying to feel the pulse is key. Easiest pulse to feel for is what we call the femoral pulse. Okay, you can feel that in dogs and in most cats. And basically just up inside the leg here at the top, if you put all your fingers across, don't use the thumb, fingers across like that, you'll feel that pulse going underneath your fingers. Have a feel at home, you'll know when you found it, okay? You'll definitely know when you can feel it. And again, you wanna get an idea for what that rate is over a minute. Every dog is different, so trying to get that uh, an established base rate for your animal when they're healthy and at rest is perfect. And it's not just how many beats there are, I mean, you also get a feel for the nature of the pulse. And if they get really thready or really strong, there can be other things going on. So uh, familiarize yourself with your animal's pulse, all right, and their rate. Final thing for the for braver people out there to train is trying to get the temperature of an animal. Now, if you're you know, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, don't, because there is a potential for, for causing more harm than good if you're not careful. So most people have got, or if you have a thermometer, it's a rectal thermometer, we'll always lubricate the thermometer up. What you want to do is just place it inside and then angle it slightly against the wall so that you're getting a direct contact, all right? Um, and it's giving you an accurate reading and there you can see what uh, temperature's coming in at 38.3, all right? So that's some vital parameters for you that can be really key to figuring out if there's a problem and I would, I would urge you all to get a, a sense of what's normal in your animal so you can pick up on any early problems.